I have like the ultimate free labor smoothie concoction right now. I do try and do as much as I can before I get to the marathon stage to make sure that my body and my baby are ready to go. But this appointment with my midwife is in a few minutes. I have two weeks less than I thought that I had. My brain is not computing. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to today's vlog. Today, I'm just going to bring you along with me into the process of how I personally get ready for labor and delivery. I'm having a couple hours kid free today. I just got out of my first in this pregnancy, I think, prenatal massage, probably first and last because I am currently 36 weeks pregnant. So we are getting very, very close to labor. And I thought that I would just bring you guys along in the journey of how I prepare for labor on all of the different fronts of like the mental preparation, the practical preparation, the physical preparation. And of course that's like a weeks long process, but I thought that in this video, it would be fun to share with you guys kind of what I'm doing in each of those like categories. But as I mentioned, I also did schedule some time in today for myself to run around to grab some of the things that I need to prepare for the birth because I am planning on doing it at home to sort through my birth bin and kind of see what is in there, what needs to be prepped for that. And I also, as I mentioned this morning, had my prenatal massage, which that is the move. If you are currently pregnant, pause this video and go schedule yourself a prenatal massage, especially if you can get one closer to delivery in your third trimester. There is just nothing like it when you have woken up from a long night of tossing and turning and getting up to pee and your hips being sore. Just wake up and get in the car and go and get a prenatal massage. It is the best thing ever. The place that I personally love to go books out like four or five months in advance because it's one of the only places in our area area that has like a pregnancy table for a prenatal massage. Basically it's like this massage table that has a dip in the middle for your belly and then like kind of supports for your belly at the side. So that was an amazing experience. Physically this pregnancy honestly has not been that hard for me. I feel like my first pregnancy was just the hardest. I was the puffiest. My baby was the biggest at this stage and my subsequent pregnancies have honestly gotten easier with time but of course there are still just like aches and pains that come with the end of pregnancy. I have been having so many Braxton Hicks at this stage. It's like on and off basically for most of my day. So I know that my body is working hard to get her in the right position because that's something I did not know before was that not only is it your body like preparing for the real thing, it's also supporting the process of moving your baby where they need to be for labor and delivery. And with that, I... I won't go into too much detail, but I can confirm that I'm starting to dilate. I have not had any cervical checks, but I just know like physically what those cues are for myself. I feel like it's all girls here, but for like the one situation where it's not, I just don't want to go into detail. I know that I'm starting to dilate. I would assume that at this point I'm probably like a one or a two. Not that that matters that much because it all changes so quickly, but all that being said, I'm definitely moving in the right direction of labor beginning on its own within the next couple of weeks. I've been having the most vivid birth dreams recently. So a couple of days ago, I decided like, all right, it's time to rent this birth tub to schedule the pickup date. So I don't have it yet, but that's happening in a couple of weeks. And my next order of business for this morning is to work down the list of some of the other like practical prep things that I need to do. So I actually did pull out the like home birth checklist that I got from my midwives for my last birth. I do actually have a midwife appointment later today that I'll also like update you guys on and I need to double check whether or not they have like updated lists but honestly this is from like last year so I'm sure it's still fine. So let's go to the dollar store and get some birth gear. <laughs> Okay, I am back home. I apologize in advance for the lighting in here. It is a little bit gloomy outside today, but 
just kind of cozy vibes in my bedroom right now. I am going to put together some bins. Basically, one of the bins is going to be all of the home birth stuff. Well, it's gonna depend on how much it can fit into these bins. I might need to branch out a little bit, but I'm hoping to put some um, home birth stuff in one and then some just like general postpartum stuff in another. For home birth, the preparation is obviously very different from hospital birth. You kind of have to prepare for both home and hospital. So at some point, I'm still going to need to fill out all of my hospital forms, pack a hospital bag, but for home birth, there's just like a few basic things that you need to have on hand at the midwives request. There's really not that much stuff that I need to have, but there are some things that make a lot more sense for us to just have here, like towels and garbage bags versus them bringing all of that in because they essentially bring in their own like mini hospital into our bedroom when they come. My husband took out my birth bin from the rafters in our garage this morning and anything that was reusable or like bleachable from the last birth I basically just kept for future birth. So on the list, um, the midwives request that you have four to eight clean older washcloths and I have all of that stuff. So I need to like separate all of this so that I can actually put it through the wash again before my labor. I have all of that. I have all of the towels that I would have used. And then the only other thing that I kept in here were the two large bowls. I don't even think that we actually used these last time. I'm pretty sure that we just disposed of my placenta immediately after my last birth. I don't really know what happened with it. It was kind of a whirlwind, but I don't think we used either of these bowls and I don't think I would have kept them if we did because they're plastic, which is porous, but that is everything that I had in that bin. So that sets me up from like a towel perspective. I am going to need to send my husband out to get another like hose because essentially to fill up the birth tub, which will kind of go in this zone here. Hang on, I'll show you guys. So we're gonna scooch the whole bed back over a little bit and I'm washing the sheets right now, which is why it looks like this and have the tub here. And then basically the hose connects in through it from the shower. So that's how we fill it up and it will go over here. So I can kind of go back and forth between the bathroom and this zone. Obviously the bed is an option as well. And to be honest, I haven't even decided yet this time if I want to birth in the tub or just have it available for labor. I feel like my priority this time is going to be movement because my last home birth was my first unmedicated birth as well. For anyone that's new here, my first birth was a birth in hospital with induction, with epidural, so completely different. And last time I feel like everything was so new to me, the pain management was so new to me, and I did a lot of laboring around like six, seven centimeters, honestly, on my side or sitting on a birth ball, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I was laying for a lot of it, I was sitting for a lot of it, and I feel like this time it would be nice to move around a little bit more, be able to leverage all fours a little bit more, which is a slightly harder thing to do in the birth tub. So I don't know. I just don't want to feel like constrained to any one position. I want to be able to just like let gravity do its thing and like pay attention to the cues that my body is giving me throughout the process to help baby get into the right spot. So all that being said, I will set it up, but I'm not like so, so committed or sold on water birth this time. And because there's always potential that I'll deliver on the bed and then obviously like be on the bed, freshly postpartum, there's all sorts of stuff you got to get to prepare prepare your bed. So basically the midwives instruct you to make your bed with like a clean fitted flat sheet and then to cover with a plastic sheet that they provide. But I also like to get a mattress protector that will go over that. And I literally went a step further at the dollar store and also got a plastic drop sheet. This is something that I did last time just as like another security measure to protect the beautiful brand new king mattress that we just got in all of our lovely white sheets. So this is like a bamboo waterproof mattress cover that I got from Amazon. And because I'm over the top, I also got puppy training pads for postpartum. I'm pretty sure they use these in hospitals because I'm like 99% sure that after my first birth, which was an in a hospital birth, that I took a couple of them home for just like postpartum recovery in our bed. Um, so I got a couple of them 
for this round as well, especially because if like water breaks in advance and you're like leaking or something, but you still wanna be trying to rest, I just feel like there's a lot of potential for fluid. <laughs> in that same vein, the last thing that I got for like a blood protection point of view was this waterproof heavy duty drop cloth. I got one of these for my last home birth as well. And I just found that it was so good to have under the birth tub, but also almost like a runway between the bed and the bathroom because as you're getting up and you're going to the bathroom postpartum, there can be stuff that drips and that's just the reality of it. And I found that in my first kind of labor experience and delivery, postpartum, whatever, that that process of like the early stages of bleeding was just happening in the hospital where they clean it. But here it's my house. So I wanted to have that as like an extra security measure as well. I also grabbed some disposable gloves for whatever reason. I feel like that's just a good thing to have on hand. And then in this basket for now, because I still have to wash all of this and figure out like where I'm gonna store it in the meantime, I'm just gonna start storing some of the like postpartum things I'm collecting. A lot of my postpartum stuff is honestly still in the garage because I have it in with like some of my newborn stuff. So things like Perry bottle and all of that. But for now I have some like heavy duty overnight pads. I actually much prefer just doing a heavy duty pad and then lining the like tux cooling and soothing pads along them. I find that that's like my favorite thing to do for postpartum and then of course having all of that in the freedom on disposable postpartum underwear those are like a must have for me so i'm gonna leave all this stuff in our bedroom for the next couple of weeks it's hard when it's your house because you don't want to live with like any extra or excess clutter as you're leading up to having a baby i feel like you want to get rid of stuff and be cleaning but at the same time i need to have all of this stuff out and on hand because as of next week, I feel like I could go into labor at any point in time and it would be fair game. So I feel a lot better about having all of this prepped. that I am 36 weeks it is officially safe for me to start having dates again and I actually strongly dislike dates I have had the hardest time with this one in each of my pregnancies but there is just so much research behind the fact that these do a great job at softening your cervix leading up to labor so my preference is to do the whole meds jewel dates I don't actually know how to pronounce that there's one other type of date that the name of is escaping me right now but with these ones, because they're a little bit bigger, you don't have to eat as many. You can do like three a day, every day leading up to labor. I have personally found that my favorite way to eat them is in a smoothie because that way I can't really taste them. I don't know what it is. It's less about the taste for me and more just about like the texture of them. Something about them just like gives me the ick, but when they're blended into a smoothie, I find that I can actually stomach it. And I have like the ultimate pre-labor smoothie concoction right now. And it's because this not only contains dates, but it also contains colostrum. If you are thinking, what the heck are you talking about? Let's talk about colostrum for a second, because this is actually something that has gone viral recently. And I feel like there's very mixed feelings about it. When I first told my husband that I was going to start taking colostrum, he looked at me like he had seen a ghost. He did not understand what that meant. So I wanted to unpack it a little bit for you guys today, because I feel like there's just so much misunderstanding around what that means and misinformation about it. And I feel like it could help a lot of you guys as well. I am very excited to be working with Armra Colostrum on this video and really looking forward to the impact that this is going to make on my labor experience and into my postpartum journey as well. So what the heck is colostrum to begin with? Colostrum is a dairy bioactive whole food that is produced by all mammals in the first 48 to 72 hours after giving birth. It contains vital and essential nutrients and Armra provides colostrum in a digestible format with over 400 functional nutrients 
nutrients, including antioxidants, peptides, and micronutrients. Armor colostrum is actually the most potent, bioavailable, and sustainably sourced colostrum on the market. I currently take three scoops daily into cold foods, so my preferred way to do it is in a smoothie, but you could also add it to something like a yogurt bowl. You could have it with a nice ice cold tea or even just with water. And because it is a whole food, not a supplement, you can actually have three to four servings of it a day. It's also keto, gluten-free, fat-free, and it's the only colostrum on the market that is also casein-free. If you are wondering what all of the hype around colostrum is, it's because it has major benefits for your skin, your gut, and your immunity. But two of the other reasons why I am taking it personally is because it also has major benefits on your energy levels and your physical performance as well. The 400 plus functional nutrients in here are a great way to naturally sustain your energy, which is something that I very much need right now, but they're also shown to improve physical performance, recovery, and support tissue repair. Since starting to take Armor Colostrum, I have noticed a really big impact on my energy levels overall, especially because I am so pregnant, not getting very much sleep right now with two toddlers as it is. I'm no longer reaching for that second cup of coffee every day. But another thing for me is that when it comes to labor and delivery, I really do treat birth as like a physical marathon more than a medical emergency. And so I want to prepare for it as if I'm going into a 10K or a 20K. And if I was doing that, I would be training physically. I'd be making sure I was fueling my body with the right things. And Armour Colostrum has been one of those right things to help support my body going into the physical marathon that labor and delivery is. If you want to try out Armour Colostrum for yourself and experience the insane benefits that it has for your gut, your skin, your cells, your immunity, your energy, your cognitive performance. All you have to do is go to tryarmra.com slash Beth. And if you use the code Beth, you can save 15% at checkout on your first order. Again, that is T-R-Y-A-R-M-R-A.com slash Beth and use the code Beth at checkout to save. So thank you so much to Armra for working with me on this video and being a part of my labor postpartum journey delivery for baby number three. I've never been a huge smoothie person. I think because for whatever reason, I have the hardest time like finishing the drinks that I make. And my husband always makes fun of me because I will always set down a cup of coffee that has like a third a cup left or a smoothie with a third a cup left. But I'm trying to drink all of these because I know how many good things are in them for me right now. And the other thing that I started doing kind of around 34 weeks was drinking raspberry leaf tea again. I honestly can't can't say if it's helped me at all in labor and delivery, but I've done it in all my other pregnancies. So it feels weird to not do it now. And there is also a lot of research on how this supports your uterus as well as just soften the cervix before labor and delivery. So I'm doing that. I'm trying to stay consistent with prenatal, vitamin B12, magnesium, omegas. And another thing that I will likely start doing as of next week is taking an evening primrose oil tablet. So I think around 37 weeks is like the safe zone to do that. That's not something that I've ever done before, but I thought I would give it a shot this time. And I feel like the last kind of like physical prep thing that is more, I guess like internal, but this one's not technically internal, is my Clariderm spray. I am obsessed with Clariderm. It has been my best friend in all of my pregnancies and postpartum experiences now. And basically around 35 weeks, I start spraying this just in that like perineum area to help soften it for labor. And then I also use this same spray as my like postpartum healing spray, as opposed to something like a witch hazel or like the Freedom Mom postpartum spray that people use. This is the one that I swear by. It is a little bit of an investment, but every mom that I know who has used that has been such a big fan of it. So. Those are kind of all the like physical, internal type of things that I am doing to get ready for labor.
I just did a little pelvic floor circuit, which is what the extent of my workouts other than a lot of walking looks like these days. I thought it would be good to share with you guys some of the different pages that have helped me when it has come to movements for labor, ways to prepare the pelvic floor for labor because there are so many helpful Instagram accounts. And when it comes to like position of baby, I feel like my education on that was at like a zero before I had my first baby. It wasn't until my second that I started to look into it more. And then this time, obviously I knew a lot of the great resources to go to for that. But pages that I love for physical birth prep are Serenity Life Doula on Instagram. I think she may or may not also have a course, but I'm pretty sure it's in person. So I have just followed along with a lot of her like Instagram reels because she talks a lot about ways to use the birth ball effectively. And the fact that like we're not getting on and just bouncing. It's most beneficial when you can do like gentle hip circles or figure eights or like hip tucks and things like that to get baby into the right position. But also something that I had no idea before I followed her is that you want your birth ball to be full of enough air so that you're sitting at like a 90 degree angle because if you are sinking too low onto it and there's not enough air, it's actually not helpful for baby's position. So her page is super helpful. I also really like good for the swole. She is a pre and postnatal like exercise specialist on Instagram and just had another baby as well. So she has so much content on her page right now about like pre-birth exercises and circuits you can go through all about getting your pelvic floor ready and like getting baby into a good position. I also obviously really like spinning babies. I feel like so much of the content that is even shared today originally came over from their website, but especially when baby girl was breached and I was trying to figure out the right positions and movements to help with that. I primarily followed the stuff that was on their website for that. And honestly, it sounds kind of dramatic, but like the positions that you have yourself in before labor really do influence the position of your baby. If you are laying on the couch and you are like slouched back like this, just imagine like the way that your baby needs to move around inside to accommodate that position. It's always best, although it's frustrating when you are like sitting on a chair to be upright, to not cross your legs, to have them at like a neutral position. Whenever I'm laying on the couch, I'm always trying to lay on my side instead of like slouched back, just because all of these things do actually influence where baby is for labor. And if I want that to go as smoothly as possible, why not in the early stages leading up to it, actually do what I can to help create the most space for her. And at the end of the day, you can do everything right from a position perspective and you might still end up having a baby that is positioned weird in the labor and delivery process or needing a C-section to get them out. As long as they're healthy, that's obviously a priority, but I do try and do as much as I can before I get to the marathon stage to make sure that my body and my baby are ready to go. Back in the car, about to head out to my second and last appointment of my like birth prep day. But I thought that before I head out, I would take a minute to tell you guys some of the ways that I prepare like spiritually and mentally for birth. I feel like that is honestly the biggest element of it and the most challenging one to tackle because birth is all about surrender and as much as we try to line things up perfectly and to have things go the way that we want them to go, it is just out of our control at the end of the day. We have to submit all of that to God. And I remember going through that process through my second birth, knowing that I wanted to do it at home and just all of the fear that came with that, but also just the joy and peace and knowing that at the end of the day, whatever the process looks like, that God's got me, that he's got my best interest in mind, that he's got this baby's best interest in mind. And so I feel like it's been a similar journey this time where it has looked like a lot of prayer and journaling and just trying to release all of the expectations to God. As much as it sounds like I've put a ton of thought into birth this time around, I've probably put the least amount of time and thought effort, I mean, outside of like today and pulling everything together that I need for all of it to happen. I haven't had that much time to actually think about 
out what this is going to look like because we've been so busy with the kids and so I feel like part of me is afraid even in the sense that it's like I haven't even had time to worry about it but I think that there's something beautiful in that and just trusting that God has got this at the end of the day. Ultimately all of the details of everything, the timing, the location, the process, the situation, all of that is in his hands and I do find comfort in that as well. A couple things that I do like to do beforehand is also just create like a worship playlist for myself in labor. Last time when I was like in the thick of labor, I used the Christian hypnobirthing app and that sounds very spooky when you first hear it, this concept of like hypnobirthing. I feel like they honestly could have named it something different, something more approachable because it really is just an app that is like reading out scriptures over you while you are in labor. And I found that to be very helpful last time. So I need to re-download the app again, but in the beginning stages, I just feel like I'm trying to focus and to stay calm and grounded and I really love worship for that so I'm trying to put one of those together and then when it comes to like the other mental prep pieces I feel like a lot of it for me is just trying to stay in the positive headspace because people love to share negative birth stories negative birth content and that is exhausting <laughs> hearing like all of the stories of worst case scenario and so what I try and do is not be like blissfully unaware of all of that stuff. Obviously it exists. There are emergencies that take place and you need to be like ready for that too. But at the same time, I feel like there's just something about saturating yourself in those positive stories and reminding yourself that people really do this every single day. People have done it for thousands of years before us. And so I personally honestly love watching positive birth vlogs. That's why I've uploaded my own. I've also read through a little bit more again of Ina May's Guide to Childbirth. I read that through last time and I found that those stories, some of them were a little funky, but a lot of them were really beautiful. So I've read through that a little bit too this time, but again, I've also read it very recently. I do also love Built to Birth podcast. I love the pain-free birth Instagram page. I find that she posts a lot of great content. Um, the other one that I listened to a lot last time around, haven't so much this time around, but it was the Happy Home Birth podcast. Podcast. It's basically all just positive home birth stories if that's something that you're looking to do. So again, there's so many ways that you can try and stay in a positive headspace. But for me, primarily it is that spiritual piece of just trying to submit all of this to God and trusting him with the process and what my birth is going to look like, but also doing what I can to try and just remain positive and not get so bogged down with fear that I feel like I'm carrying a lot of that going into labor because that's obviously not a good place to be as well. So that's kind of like all of the mental spiritual stuff that I do. But this appointment with my midwife is in a few minutes. At this midwife appointment, we are doing the follow-up from the last ultrasound that I had. So we're supposed to be checking in on my placenta and seeing if it's still considered circumvallate but also just checking in on baby girl size because historically I birth pretty big babies and they wanted to check in on that as well. So once I have more information, I will fill you guys in as well. Okay, so you know how before I left for that appointment, I was preaching all about trusting God with the timing and the details all being in his hands? God really said, let's put that to the test because they just told me that I have two weeks less than I thought that I had. Like, I thought I was going into that appointment 35 weeks, turning over to 36 weeks tomorrow. But they told me that I am 37 weeks and I actually ended up leaving with a tub full of all of the midwife supplies for home birth. So I feel like mentally right now, I am just trying to wrap my head around all of that. In the last like 15 minutes, I called like all of my people, none of them answered. So you guys are getting the fresh mental processing, but I don't know why in my head, I just felt like I had so much more time. I think it's because there's been two due dates that have been floating around and I've been working off the later one because last time I went late, but they're working off of the earlier one right now. Sorry, my camera just died, but 
Anyway, I just was not operating off of that timeline whatsoever. Jared and I haven't done any of our nesting yet. We were gonna do it all in one day when we had arranged for like the kids to be out of the house, which is my brain is not computing. One, two, three, still not for another five days. So at that point, I'm gonna be 38 weeks before I do anything for the baby specifically in terms of like, getting the car seat ready, washing the clothes. So it just is like, how are we at this point? And it's weird because you have nine months of pregnancy to prepare, but when you have young kids, you don't have any time to prepare. <laughs> the baby just shows up and you just roll with it. But I got this tub from the midwives. I'm glad that I've done all of this like setup stuff today. There's a dollar store drop sheet in there too for our bed. I also got this little like package with all of my information to have on hand for when they come and then a bunch of like little samples and things like that i feel like i'm not going to be able to sleep until we do our big nesting blitz in five days but anyway i'm gonna wrap this vlog up here i hope that you guys enjoyed seeing some of the behind the scenes of how i'm preparing for labor and delivery obviously i have a little bit more preparation to do but that is kind of the gist of how I get myself into the headspace, spiritually, mentally, my body ready physically, and also all of the practical pieces that come with it as well. So thank you guys for being here. I also wanted to say thank you to Armra for working with me on this video and remind you guys that if you wanna check out their colostrum, that all you have to do is go to tryarmra.com slash Beth or use that code Beth at checkout to save 15% off of your order again i will have a link for that here on the screen and in the description box so definitely check that out but thank you guys again for being here and until my next video i love you guys i'm praying for you please pray for me and i will see you soon